Honkai Star Rail is the brand new game by Hoyoverse. Although it is not canonically related to Genshin, Honkai Star Rail has many thanks to give to its predecessor. Hello everyone, my name is Fireheart and welcome to the 7 ways Honkai Star Rail is better than Genshin Impact. I would like to start with the point that everything in Star Rail can be accessed straight from the menus, with the exception of level up rewards. The dispatch and redispatch characters, the crafting system, all of the domains, the simulated universe, the forgotten hall, and much more can be accessed with just the cell phone. And for the level up rewards, which is the only thing we can't get, we have to travel to Pom Pom, which is not a bad deal. Now for my next point here we have the chests have higher rewards. Yes, in fact, Genshin Impact has far more chests. But I ask you, what is more rewarding? Finding a common chest that only gives you two primo gems, which is the minimum in Genshin. Well, technically the minimum is zero since in Monsdat and Liyue you can fight chests that give you no primo gems. Well, the minimum in Honkai Star Rail is 5 Primo Gems. And there are also simple puzzles that you can do that can give you 20 or 30 Stellar Jades. Also, in my Genshin video, I did say that the artifact system for Genshin was easier to farm and a simple method to farm. However, Star Rail counteracts this point by having a much requested features from the Genshin community, an artifact reroller. With this consumable, you can simply select the artifact that you want to change and then change it to your will, within certain parameters, of course. Now, one of my favorite things that Star Rail has done is that you can get free 5 star light cones and their refinement by simply playing the weekly mode simulated universe. That whole mode deserves a video for its own, but for now I'll just say that the rewards for the simulated universe are pretty pog. Not only can you get different types of 5 star light cones, but you can also eventually refine them to their maximum refinement. There are 3 5 star light cones, one for the hunt, one for the preservation and one for the destruction. And you will also be able to buy super imposers that are custom made to superimpose such light cones. And if in the future you run out and buy everything already, you can still use your currency of the herd store to buy star rail passes. Speaking of stuff that is for free, the free characters that you get in this game are actually good. Contrary to Genshin where you get your first character, that is Amber, in Star Rail you get your first character which is March 7th. While you will replace Amber at the first opportunity you get, you will not be replacing March 7th so soon. March 7th is a great shooter. And she is also from the ice element and her ultimate grants you a large AOE of ice damage and application, which can even freeze enemies, being quite the good ultimate. Contrasting this with Amber, which her Baron Bunny does not do much damage, her normal attacks don't deal much damage and her ultimate is very underwhelming, it's clearly to see that March 7th is superior to Amber as a first companion. And she is only one of the examples that I have to give to you. Dunhang, Serval and other characters that you get for free are all usable at least. And some of them you will get more than just for the beginning of the game. But while we are talking about March 7th, we gotta talk about the biggest comparison of Paimon and the companions that we have in Star Rail, which is primarily March 7th. While walking around in the Genshin universe, Paimon will do all the talking for you in her annoying voice. March 7th, Dan Hang, Wilt, and Himiko are all great companions. Although in the main story, we haven't got a chance to hang out with Himiko yet. And our main companion that is always by our side for the moment is March 7th. Is also having no Paimon around gives the Trailblazer more opportunities to express themselves. And my final point here for my little list is the point that overall in this game 
it is easier to farm stuff. You don't need to go fight some boss for 40 resin to get your gems or whatever. You simply have to go get fight some regular monsters and some elite monsters, which is basically the same as the regular monsters but more powerful. There are no bosses to fight aside from the weekly bosses. Not only that, excluding the characters that we need to level up and the light cones which is basically the same thing, farming for regular materials like materials for cooking or just enhancing our character is far easier. While Genshin being open world gives you a lot of space to go running around to fight the enemies in Honkai Star Rail, the advantage of having a smaller map works for farming materials, because since the map is smaller you can simply go to the location and the enemy will be a few meters away from you. Not only that, but you can also just break boxes and you'll get some stuff for crafting as well. And the daily stellar J's you can get by simply doing stuff that you would naturally do anyways. Things like doing your daily mission, yes, singular, only one daily mission, using techniques on enemies, having support characters on a party while fighting and win, complete a calyx domain or synthesize a material. Those are easy tasks that you would do daily anyway. And the daily reward is the same, 60 primo gems for Genshin or 60 stellar jades for Star Rail. Now of course the purpose of this video is not to incite conflict between the two games. This is just my objective opinion on the matter. So much so that I made an opposite video that was uploaded together with this one, called 7 ways Genshin is better than Honkai Star Rail. The video will appear shortly on your screen. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment and I'll see you in the other video.